Hey guys, today in the Suron shop, we're gonna take a look at what it takes to actually make your Suron a little closer to street legal. And then we're gonna do that using the GLE dashboard app and take a look at how you tune it yourself. So let's check things out. All right guys, so where I live in the state of New York, a Suron could potentially fall into the category of a class two or a class three e-bike. I say potentially, because the motor is a little bit of a challenge. So a class two e-bike, it's gotta have pedals in New York, which is why I have the Kaniwaba pedal kit on mine. Although at the moment, I'm just rocking foot pegs. Um, so pedal assist is legit. However, you can't have a motor more than 750 watts. The Suron motor is more than 750 watts. So in terms of configuring the bike or tuning the bike so that we're closer to street legal, the dashboard app has got this really cool ability to go in and set up a street mode and a high speed or a ludicrous mode. So at the moment, you can see I've got my street mode maxed out at 750 watts. Ludicrous with my bypass battery is 7,000. So what happens with this 150 pound bike with my, you know, probably 200 pounds dressed on top of it set to 750 watts? Oh, not too much of anything. Let's take a ride and find out. Well, as luck would have it, I deleted the video with the, uh, with the ride set to 750 watts. But let me just sum it up for you. The bike at 750 watts won't get out of its own way. So you can set it to that, but you're not going to go faster than about 10 miles an hour, and you're not going to go up anything even resembling a hill. Maybe someday I'll set it to 750 and post a video and show you guys what that's really like. But let's just continue with the rest of the video and look and see how the rest of the tuning can affect the performance. You know, it's funny, but the most challenging thing about making this video is finding a camera angle that lets me use the tripod and let you guys see the screen so that I don't have to hold the camera while I try to do it. So 750 watts, useless. I went back in and I changed the power setting for street mode back to 5,000. I only use street mode if I want to take it easy on the battery. The rest of the time I have it in ludicrous. So leaving that alone, if you go back now and you go to the settings and you want to go to the settings for the motor, so you click on the little motor icon, there's a couple of things in here you have to change. So once it does its thing and it reads all the values, right? You want to have the alternate speed limit enabled set to on. And then if you scroll down a little bit more, there's a vehicle maximum standard speed and ludicrous speed. So I've set maximum for standard to 30. I have ludicrous at 70, although my bike won't go 70. It does easily 55. I don't know what the top end is, but it's not going 70. And then in any case, you have this speed regulator mode. You set that to torque with speed limiting. And once you've made those changes, make sure you hit the save button. It'll flash that to the controller. And then when you go back on your front end screen now, you should have this additional button that shows you slow and fast. Now, what's the difference between slow and fast and ludicrous and, and street? I look at it this way. Ludicrous in street is simply the maximum power output, right? So 7,000 or 5,000, everything else is the same. Fast and slow just modifies your top end speed limit. So the way I have it set now, ludicrous and slow, in theory, I should have a full 7,000 watts available. However, I'm gonna cap out at about you know, it says 30 miles an hour. In reality, that's probably 25. If I were to change it to fast, now I should be full ludicrous mode. Full power, full speed. Street, in this case, is going to knock me down to 5,000, but as fast as I can possibly go at 5,000. In slow, street would be 5,000 capped out at 25 miles an hour. So what we're gonna do now is actually test that out. We're gonna go ludicrous fast, and we're gonna go for a ride, and we're gonna see that the bike should feel like it does just in plain ludicrous mode. 
We'll try ludicrous slow and see if we top out at, you know, 25 or 30 miles an hour and still have full power. And then we'll try street mode and make sure everything else is working as well. All right, so to get going, we're gonna start off in fast and ludicrous. This should be full power. Let's just see what it feels like. Get out of the way, Dolly, you nut job. All right, I'm gonna call that a very successful test. That felt like full power, and I don't think you guys could see the dashboard as I was going there, but uh, we were up at about 53 miles an hour indicated. I don't think I'm going that fast, but that was how it was indicated. So let's just drop it down to slow. Now, hopefully in this mode, I've still got full power. I'm just limited to speed. So now we set to slow mode. Really the only difference here should be top speed. I should have the same amount of power available. So let's just see what this feels like. See if we can go up this little hill here. Barely made it up that hill, so something is not quite right. Let's. easier to get up that hill cool little shortcut to get to the screen just hold down that uh, fast slow button so what seems to be happening is this vehicle maximum speed is not only changing the speed but it's changing the amount of torque that's available too 
I don't believe it's supposed to work that way, but those are the results that I'm getting. So now we've changed it so that the top is 40 miles an hour. I'm just looking for something in the middle here that I'm comfortable with. Let's see how this works. Right off the bat, you can feel the difference. Not as much power. Feels like not as much power. And I'm saying that based on throttle response. All right, I'm gonna show you guys. Watch my right hand. All right. You can easily just go to full power there. And the bike doesn't even try to try to go. Set this way, let's go up the hill. Alright, you can make it up there but you're certainly not going fast. And then just to show you the difference, if we put it back in fast mode, right? And really, according to the way this works, or the way I think this works, that should just be limiting the top end, not the power, right? Right here, obviously, throttle response is a little bit different. You know, unless you want to be, uh, be wheeling, end up on your head, can't just crack that throttle wide open. So what does that tell me? Well, let's put it back in slow. All right, let's just take a quick look. All right, and slow at the moment is set to 40. Torque feels reasonable. Let's go for a ride up and down the road here and uh, see if we can tell where we top out. All right, so that that going up that slight hill there topped out at about 25 miles an hour. Going up the bigger hill in the back it pulled me up no problem, but it was slow, which is effectively what I would expect it to be doing. However, you know, throttle response completely, completely different. All right, guys, so after all of that, where do we end up? Well, highest probability is that I don't know what I'm doing. I think I do, and I'm going in and I'm turning on that, you know, limit the, don't limit the torque, but limit the speed. And uh, you can see from my test, setting it to 30, 50, and 40, it limits the torque at the same time. So 
either I don't know what I'm doing, and again, I think that's probably the highest probability, or there's a bug in the app. I mean, this, this, this thing is software. So software, as a guy who's written a lot of software, can be notoriously buggy. And my version is probably two or three weeks out of date. I haven't updated it recently. So what am I gonna do? Well, in the short term, while the way that I have it set up with the slow and the fast and the 40 miles an hour in there, feels like a decent compromise. Since I don't know exactly what else it's controlling or if I have it set up the right way, I'm just gonna go back in and shut that off. And I'm gonna leave it at uh, 5,000, 7,000 for, for street and ludicrous mode. And when I wanna go slow, I'm just gonna put it down into street mode. Now I'm guessing that uh, this app will continue to get updated. If that's a bug, I'm, I'm sure the GLE guys are gonna fix it. And uh, if anybody's got any experience other than what I just showed, right? If you can show me how to uh, actually make this work, I'd love to see it. You know, make your own video, put a comment below uh, with a link to it, and uh, let's get the community educated. In any case, the ability to do this kind of tuning from your phone on the bike in real time without having to call anybody, you know, without having to have a tech dial in, yeah, this is really, really cool. I love the direction we're going here. So, Regardless of the fact that I may be struggling with it in a little teeny bit, thanks to the guys at Greenline Engineering for, uh, for this product and for helping make the community better. In any case, guys, thank you for watching and uh, subscribe if these videos are useful. Thanks a lot.